Good evening and welcome to this program, Elections 2020 Update. This program, we're here tonight to specifically respond to Mr. Granger's statement that he made to the country not so long ago, a few moments ago. I'm joined here this evening by my colleagues, Ms. Priyamani Chan and Ms. Joseph Hamilton. And we will respond directly to Mr. Granger's uh, press release. And we will also clear the air on some of the matters, some of the issues that took place last week at Chikom um, when the, the process was interrupted and all of the events that have taken place from then until now. So thank you very much um, for being here. And Joe, maybe we could uh, start with you and we will get, um, each of us will comment on all of the events. Uh, Susan, um, thank you. And myself and Priya, we were doing the rounds earlier and we continue even tonight. The thing is, Mr. Granger in his comments uh, said that our results presented to the Guyanese people, the PUP civic results, is a falsification. Uh, basically, he's saying it's bogus results, but let us examine what is happening. We have 10 regions, which are 10 electoral districts. Region 1 to 10, except for 4, the RO tabulated, verified, and declared in the districts the results for all the political parties with no contention. So, no way from Region 1 to 10, except the 4, there is a falsification or bogus declaration. Uh, those declarations are accepted. Um, I know that once uh, APNU indicated they will um, challenge and ask to recount in Region 3, uh, I don't think they went through with that. Uh, I know they also asked for requests in Region 5 and 6. And as I understand it, um, Region 5, prayer correct me, I, take, uh, I would say Region 5 and 6, and somebody said only Region 5, uh, the, 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 the recount was done. And the recount as DBS showed nothing changed. Something that the, the PPP got two or three more. Well, well, well our votes were increased um, by, by two or three. So let us lay those nine regions aside. There is no falsification. There is no bogus GCOM along with the political parties, including Mr. Granger's political party, APNU, have accepted the declarations of the nine regions, as far as we know. The diplomatic community, the observers, all the people who are paying attention, they have no issue with those nine uh, declarations in the nine districts. We come to Region 4, and as far as I understand it, of the boxes examined, verified, and tabulated, there is no contention uh, over those boxes. It is when you have had an intervention of a spreadsheet with numbers uh, increased for Mr. Granger party, then the contention and uproar, as he calls it, developed. And that was clearly a conspiracy between Mr. Granger's party and uh, officials of GCOM because the only political party that had the spreadsheet that the DRO was, uh, the, the, the DRO was calling numbers from was that of the People's National Conference, Congress, APNU, AFC, um, so, so if he wants to speak about bogus results, his people, Basil Williams, Valdo Lawrence, they had bogus results in their hands because they had the spreadsheet similar to the bogus one that, um, that, that was presented and you and uh, Susan, you and Priya know about the issue more than I because you were there present at the time. But, so that is uh, Mr. Granger's secondly point about 
upholding the rule of law, and that is his, you know, that is how charlatan speaks. Uh, seek to deceive and seek to uh, fake um, righteousness and holiness and all it, and goodness and morality and so. So he upholded the rule of law and every step of the way, more than any president in this country, for that matter, together, all the presidents, uh, Mr. Granger is notorious for trumping and throwing into the wastebasket all the laws and constitution, beginning with Patterson's um, uh, appointment to GCOM. Uh, we have all the issues that we wouldn't go back to. The nation is very much aware. Uh, the no confidence motion issue, well, how we treated that, and all the court rulings surrounding that. And now we come to, since Thursday, you have this matter, and he comes tonight, most likely strategically prayer uh, because tomorrow you have a court hearing so he seeks to speak the night before the court matter is to be heard um, and that is how as I said uh, charlatan operate apparently thinking that he uh, can somehow uh, seek to control how the judiciary will deal with this matter tomorrow but that but that, that, that's another, another issue but Mr. Granger is deceiving himself. The only set of people who believe Mr. Granger uh, utterances are his supporters, not the guy, and not all his supporters, because some of his supporters, I have seen them commenting uh, on social media that they don't believe him. Some of his supporters have indicated that if you have, if you won the election, then trust your statements of poll the same way how the PPP showed, showed us. Uh, your statement of poll. So Mr. Granger is not to be believed. I don't think Mr. Granger's utterances will sway uh, the, the, the diplomatic community or the, the observers. And you know, his narrative cannot take hold because as much as he tried in his presentation to paint it as a PPP APNU contention, that is not so. It's the whole world is contending against Mr. Granger and his party. Uh, so it is not, you know, he's attempting to paint it that way. Mr. Granger is alone in a corner. Uh, the old world is on the side of democracy. Mr. Granger's party is on the side of trying to hijack and steal the elections. And, and, and that is where we're at. As we go on, we will speak some more to those issues. Yeah. Suzanne, I, I, this is typical Granger. It is, it's worrying because he's behaving as though we're in normal times and we are not. This country is in turmoil and that is in turmoil for the world to see. In fact, the CARICOM statement speaks directly to the loss of life and harm and so on that has come about because of what happened um, during our election count. Granger repeatedly paints himself as being aloof of all the wrongdoing that's happening. He says, oh, I don't know about this, oh, I don't know about And that's not acceptable anymore. You can't be a sensible president or a sensible person and expect people to believe that. Look, Mr. Granger has sensible children. He has grandchildren that are grown. He has um, sensible nephews and nieces that I know about, reasonable people. And if it is that he was being lied to and indeed maybe his party members are lying to him there's this big issue in the press that has blown up where the pvp has put up their own statements where the international community the un the caricom the oas um commonwealth and a whole set of observer groups the us canada uk are all saying something is wrong very wrong um, with your numbers if he truly had an interest a genuine interest in finding out what it is and he himself is not able to sit with the statements of poll he could have gotten people close to him that he trusts and said calculate this for me and said to his own party bring me my statements of poll so mr. Granger cannot absolve himself from what's happening here in fact with this statement where he seeks to justify the usage and defend the numbers that are put up by GCOM here, it makes me believe that he might be the intellectual author of, of this whole um, plan that, that got played out here. So I am not, I don't, and I don't, you know, the, the thing about today's world is you don't have to have 
everything, all information passes so quickly that this is not a preview. As Georgia said, this is a worldview. I am not sure that there are countries in the world who have not spoken about this matter through their representative organizations. So the whole world is telling this to the whole world. This is not a cliche. The UN has 195 countries. The CARICOM has 15 countries. The Commonwealth has 54 countries. Um, the, OS the, OS, the, the OS has 35 countries. The EU has, I think, 24 countries. The United States, Canada, the UK, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Norway, um, France. Norway, France, observer groups that are local, the PSC, AMCHAM, Bar Association, ordinary citizens in this country have all said to Mr. Granger that, and his administration, not only that the process you have used does not comply with law and is not transparent and it will produce electoral fraud and fraudulent results, but they have gone further. And they have said, David Granger, you must not be sworn in on this. The latest, um, the latest message that was this country received on whose behalf someone, another person spoke was from Secretary of State Mike Pompeo from the United States of America. I mean, we can't get, I mean, we could get higher than that, but that is an extremely high level of interest being taken in what has been declared by the world as fraudulent electoral um, processes that would result in electoral fraud. So I don't believe Mr. Granger could hide behind this, the particular skirt of saying, oh, I don't know what's going on. The people around me do things. If he is saying that, then for that alone, he should not be the president because when real things happen in this country, we're going to have a president who doesn't know what's going on if he wants to be the president and if the people voted for him. But Suzanne, particularly, I want to come back to the process. And that is because uh, Mr. Granger's statement claims that he released a paper statement. Is it a paper statement? I, yeah. I saw it on paper. Yeah. It, th this is a man who's the whole country has a problem with what happened. The whole world, as we said, has a problem with what happened. And he didn't have the courtesy to stand in front of a press corps and give an explanation. He releases a paper statement. And in his paper statement, he says the PPP's results are bogus and the PPP is relying on bogus, bogus statements or bogus results. Well, show us your real results. Show us your results that say the PPP zone is bogus. You come. You have all the government services and resources at, at your hand reach. You didn't hesitate to use them during the campaign trail. The country gives you permission to use it now to post your results onto our website put your results in the newspaper show us your statements of poll because if you're saying ours is wrong and you should be sworn in then show us what yours is but he's not doing that but more than that let's remember what happened here on the night of election at 11 o'clock in the night the process began so let's just recap a little bit what happens in the polling place everybody goes there it's for six o'clock in the morning you have polling agents from each party which is a political party representative the PPP had the AP and you had and some political parties had polling agents in various polling places so and what we have and we have a whole set of GCOM staff at the end of the day when the count is made people we come to see how many the AP and you got how many the PPP got how many votes were spoiled how many were rejected and so on the presiding officer sits down and writes that down on something called a statement of poll the um, ballot box number so and so polling division number so and so so many people come to vote 300 people are on the list 295 voted uh the ap and anog was the first name on the ballot the a and the united a new and united Guyana. anog got one um the ap and you got 15 the some some other party got 10 the ppp got 20 you write it down and at the end of it all, the presiding officer signs it, the polling agents sign it, and the polling agents leave that building, leave that polling station with a copy of the statement of poll in their hands. And they take it to their party's headquarters or they flash pictures and send it through. So by 11 o'clock that night, all of the political parties, especially in Region 4, and that's what, that's what is a bit... Funny, Region 4, you have a polling 
station that's five minutes away. A lot of the polling stations were within a mile, two miles, three mile radius of the of the ROs office, which was at um, Ashman's building. You have all the political parties had their numbers, and most importantly, GCOM, the returning officer, had the statements of poll that left the polling place for Region 4, and the GCOM had their statements of poll that left it. At 11.30 that night, at 11.30 that night, the counting began in Region 4. Not counting, sorry, the tabulation. Now, what's tabulation? Tabulation is the arrow sits down in front of us, with the, in front of the political parties and the observers. He puts a desk, he has a chair, and he has a pile of statements of poll in front of him. The same thing he, the, that I said you leave the state place of poll with. And he picks it up and he says box number 4384 in division 411312 had blank num X number of people on the list, X number of people voted. The ANUG got two votes, the APNU got 15 votes, the PPP got 20 votes, and the political parties sit there with their statements of poll and they compare to make sure what they're calling out there is right. Now, that process is dictated and guided by law. The law says you must do that, and the law says who must be in the room, the political parties, observers, and so on. The point I make is that the statements of poll that are being used by the PPP begun to be used on the night of the second by 11 o'clock that night. So we didn't manufacture anything. That night we were ready to go. We wanted to know why we weren't going on. Um, we were ready to start and finish it that very night. In fact, many other places finished their own that night. In Region 3, for example, by the next day, we had finished doing that tabulation with the same statements of poll. So the statement of poll that was used, that is posted on the website, we was forced to create after this trouble started, are the same statements. So there are no bogus statements here, or there were no bogus statements up until the night of Thursday night. Thursday night, up until Thursday night, there were no bogus statements. So what happened? So let's quickly recap. On the night of the election night itself, on the 2nd, the count started. Nobody was aware, so Mr. Mingo, who is the returning officer, just began doing the count. People, the tabulation. Then uh, it was stopped, not by any political party. It was stopped by Mr. Mingo, Mr. Lewinfield, the um, chief election officer so that a time could be given that everybody can come back. It began again, I believe, at 2.30 in the morning. This is on Tuesday morning. Election was Monday, where all the political parties were present um, using statement of poll to statement of poll. That is, the RO had the statement of poll in his hand. The PPP had theirs. The APNU had theirs. Several boxes were done, and nobody said, not Mr. Granger's party, nor any other small party or observer said, hold on. Arrow, you're calling the wrong thing. The PPP didn't say that either because we, we were all happy with what the statement of the numbers on the statement of polls match because it makes sense that it would match. They all got recorded at the same place. Everybody signed off on it. Sometime later that day, um, the process stopped. The arrow came back, Mr. Mingo. And then at some stage, his, he said he wasn't feeling well. And he was taken to the hospital. When he left, his clerks began to do um, this verification exercise, but not with the statements of poll. They came with a sheet of paper, several sheets, that they claim had the information from the statements of poll, and they were reading it out from that sheet of paper. They proceeded to do 21 boxes, and of the 21 boxes, 17 boxes had problems. 17 boxes, and not problems like uh, 13 instead of 14. Each box was inflated for the APNU by 100 sometimes, by 75, by 90. Throughout that process, every single time there was an error, the PPP made objections, the observers made objections, small parties made objections. The only people who sat quietly in the room said nothing, although they had their statements in front of them, were the APNU. 
representatives. Priya, let me just let me just correct you, just just right here, because all of this time when we're comparing statements of poll vis-a-vis statements of poll, and then we suddenly switched to this spreadsheet when Mr. Mingo excused himself and was taken to the to the hospital and the clerks were introduced with this spreadsheet. The table where the APNU agents sat, which included Basil Williams and Valda Lawrence, their table was clear, but for the exact spreadsheet that the clerks from GCOM were calling from. So they had no statements of poll on their table. They only had this spreadsheet that corresponded um, with the spreadsheet the numbers that were with, with the numbers that were being called um, by GCOM. <laughs> Our table, of course, had hundreds of, of statements of poll um, that we were waiting uh, to, to go through. So at no point did they, did they present their, their statements of poll. GCOM was using the statements of poll. Let me tell Before, you. Before, yes. The, 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 the whole issue, the reason GCOM is supposed to use a statement, I don't think the law anticipated that GCOM would be a party to any fraud. It was supposed to be so that if the political parties have numbers that vary somehow or the other, that GCOM would be the referee and say, well, hold on a second here. My poll, which is the uh, my statement, which is the authentic thing coming out of the place of poll, says X, and we're going to have to go with that. We have a different situation now. We have GCOM, who is giving us falsified statements numbers. Mm -hmm. falsified numbers. <coughs> and I don't believe the officers at GCOM, and nobody in their right mind believes that, that the officers at GCOM got up all of a sudden and decided they wanted to rig an election. I believe strongly, and it is reasonable to believe, that the APNU AFC has a plan, had a plan, and GCOM is executing that plan. And the plan is to take government by any means possible. Um, and, and so that is, so, so we have that. Then that process got stopped because the parties objected to the use of the state of the, of the spreadsheet. Um, the CEO came, promised to resume using the statements of poll. We had a resumption with, um, with the same clerks who then said they were tired after a few boxes and they said they couldn't go on anymore and they left. Subsequent to that, a young man was chosen. We had to find a, another DRO because in the, the law allows either the RO, the returning officer, his deputy to do this declaration, to do this tabulation. Um, they have 80 deputies in, in the whole of Region 4. We couldn't, they couldn't find any. So anyway, they finally found one. And they found a, a clerk to um, a, a, a returning officer, a deputy returning officer, and they brought him in. He did four boxes, literally four boxes, and then said he couldn't go anymore. He was too tired. When he left, he left with a flash drive, and there's a whole story surrounding that flash drive that transcended a few days. The flash drive had information on it. He said he was so tired he couldn't call another word. He couldn't call another number. So you expect that when he leaves, he would go and fall into a bed and sleep right away or something. Something happened that alerted someone in the building about his presence. They went into a room and found him, this is after he had left being so tired, found him manipulating a computer, managing something on a computer. Um, in that room, instead of where, you know, you, would, you expect the two women who left at least three, four hours earlier would be in a bed sleeping because they were so tired, they couldn't do anything else. They were all in that room and they were all actively engaged in doc using documents and using the computer. And that raised alarms that caused um, a lot of discomfort amongst people in the room about and the political parties about what he was doing with the um, flash drive, what information was supposed to be troubled and, and varied and so on and so on. That process went on till about five, six in the morning and there was a decision taken that we would start back uh, tabulating these results on the Thursday. So we, we, this is Wednesday night now. On Thursday at 9 a.m. Thursday is the day that goes down in the history of this country as, as being 
the day the AP and UAF seen collusion with the Ghana Elections Commission tried to rig an election on live TV. Um, and in the presence of observers and ambassadors who represented the world really watching because that's what happened by 11 o'clock that morning so nothing started at nine by 11 that morning mr mingo came into the room and everybody thought he was about to begin the tabulation again and what he did instead was attempt to declare the results for region four when there were still 400 and something boxes that had not been verified that had not been gone through there was a loud protest against that loud objection against that not only by the PPP um, but by all the small parties by the observers there was this an objection to that and he left the room about an hour and a half later mr. Mingo was at the top of a balcony protected by police officers where who prevented access to him by anyone else and purported to well read something we didn't know what it was because there was loud uh objection to that behavior too we believed it was to do the same thing declare results without um tabulating as the law stipulates so he did that uh and then later in the afternoon the pro the press officer who against whom there were complaints publicly made statements made against her she wasn't available for people to talk to her and, and to give information and so on released a document that resembles strongly a declaration made for the region four results that declaration puts the ap and uafc ahead of every other party and if those numbers were to be used would put them in the lead in the election that declaration is contrary wholly contrary to the the information on the statements of poll that are in the possession of the People's Progressive Party, in the possession of the observers, in the possession of the small parties that remain posted to today's date outside the polling places where they were put up the, when everybody was leaving the room according to law. The law says you must post one in a conspicuous place outside the polling place. All the their, their hundreds still up on the wall all over this country in region four but all over the country also particularly in region four so the numbers declared by mr mingo or purportedly declared by mr mingo are totally bogus mr granger wants to talk about bogus results let's talk about some bogus results and they favor mr granger and we have nothing to show Nobody has presented anything to show that these numbers are authentic based on what the people in those polling places wanted. So, Susan, the, the issue that we have here, and then again, alarmingly, on that declaration, Valda Lawrence, who is the General Secretary for the, the, people's chairman, of the, people's the chairman of the People's Nat National Congress, the largest party in that coalition six people six party coalition the, and a very very high position her signature appears on that declaration when mr mingo read that declaration and it's on camera when he read that declar declaration and he signed on the document valda lawrence was not near to him she was nowhere near to him after that because just after that he was escorted out of the building um with six men, we never saw him back. Nobody ever saw him back. Well, at least, let me say this. Nobody from the PPP, the small parties or the observer groups ever saw him back. Yet, Valda Lawrence's signature appears on that document. So, two things. One, what's her signature doing there? No other declaration in any other region has a signature for anyone else except the RO. And two, when did it go there? Because it didn't go there when he declared and when he placed what appeared to be a signature on the form so when was that signature placed there was it a prefabricated document where was it manufactured was it manufactured in the office they seemed to be having to to be um occupying at the gcom secretariat was it manufactured at congress place what is her signature doing there mr Granger has to answer that i want to appeal to 
all reasonable Guyanese. If we go back and just look at the facts, look at the process that we were engaged in last week, these elections would have been announced, would have probably gone down in history as the earliest um, announcement because we were doing very well with all of the regions, including Region 4. So nine regions had already been declared using the same process where um, the statements of poll were being compared, um, statement of poll vis-a-vis -vis statement of poll. And all was going well in all of the regions, um, minor discrepancies only. We completed more than half of Region 4 before this spreadsheet was introduced. And of course, as soon as this spreadsheet was introduced is when we started seeing um, glaring inconsistencies. And um, it was only consistent in the way that APNU was getting more votes um, with every ballot box that was being called. And as Priya said, 17, we got to 21 ballot boxes and 17 were um, inflated for the APNU AFC. And we kept objecting. After each ballot box, we kept objecting and all the clerks were saying was noted, 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 and they kept uh, moving on, calling the next box, calling the next box, um, until we, we objected very loudly and we had to put um, we had to stall the process and get the CEO in there to explain where the spreadsheet came from. And um, he came and there is video evidence of him promising not only the PPP agents, but all of those who were, who were there, all of the observers, including um, the American ambassador and the British ambassador. They were both in the room when Lowenfield said he will begin the process using um, the statements of Paul once again. And we know what happened to that, to that process. Just a few were um, started to be called and then persons cried, cried out that they were tired and then they brought somebody else in and the same story kept going on and on. And then we had um, bomb scares and all of these things. None of these things were coordinated by the People's Progressive Party Civic. And none of these things are the fault of the People's Progressive Party Civic. All we have been calling for is a return to that verification process that had worked so well for the other nine regions. And suddenly, when we came to Region 4, and when uh, the presence of, of, when Walt Lawrence came there and Basil Williams came there and the spreadsheet turned up, that's when everything went haywire and, and, and all of the inconsistencies started, started to come up. And then, of course, as, as Priya mentioned, then we have this mysterious signature of Walla Lawrence. Clearly, you can see her signature at the bottom of the Region 4 declaration. All of the other declarations, the other nine, just have a stamp, the stamp of the arrow and the signature of the arrow. But Region 4 has Vala Lawrence's signature accompanying that of Mr. Mingo, the returning officer for Region 4. And it's not us telling you this, it's on the GCOM website, it's posted there, you can go there and verify for yourself. And it was even published in the Chronicle newspaper yesterday. So it's there for, for all of the country to see, for all of the world to see. And this is, it has been brought to the attention of the international observers as well. Now, any objective person looking at this can see that the only persons telling you anything different from what we're saying is Mr. Granger and the APNU and, and, and the AFC. They're the only persons telling you different. And the People's Progressive Party has been consistently um, giving you the facts and along with the international observers and the ambassadors and so on. The entire world has condemned uh, the process for for verification what they when, when it stopped so we had a free and fair poll on Monday March the 2nd everything was going well the observers commended the process and commended GCOM until we got to region 4 when the verification process as set out in our laws in the laws of Guyana when that process was interrupted and what is the problem with, um, why wouldn't the APNU AFC want verification? If you claim that you have won, 
Don't you want to win on credible results? Don't you want your, your government, if you're taking government and you're telling your supporters that you've won, don't you want your, your win to be credible? Don't you want it to be a decent one, one with integrity? They, they are the only ones that have a problem with this process and they have not released their statements of poll because if they do, we know what it will show. It will show that the People's Progressive Party Civic won these elections um, overwhelmingly. But also the, the narrative is let G come do their work. That is the, P, the APNU's narrative. That's what Granger said in the statement and we're addressing the statement and that is what all his spokespersons are but saying. But the chairman of pages. his party's signature no, they're, so they're saying let G come do their work. Yeah. They're not prepared to tally. Let G come do yes, their work. Yes, G come, but G come is doing their work as a conspirator with Green Genesis which, which is my point. Uh, the, the, so let us address that statement in his letter. That, that, G come must be allowed to do their to work. To do their work. Um, as a constitutional agency so falsifying documents and, and, and that kind of thing but we can't allow that not that, only the ppp and not only the observers but i want to especially recognize the small parties here the small parties stayed in that room for all the time the the, the three days day and night day and night refused to move bomb scare police force all that refused to move including the two ambassadors as well small parties ambassadors observers because by then we had sensed that something was happening but i want to address particularly the part of mr granger's statement where he seeks to say we must allow the constitutional agency to carry out their function we cannot allow that as responsible citizens of this country without heavy scrutiny and the reason for that is there is a heavy collusion there's no other conclusion once one can sensibly draw between one political party who is seeking political office, who competed in these elections, and the constitutional agency that he's asking us to trust. In other words, the two of them getting together to rig this election and steal this country. So we cannot lay back ourselves and say, well, it's a constitutional body, and we're going to look at this constitutional um, it just we stand, let stand the constitutional body and, do its work do because right wanted. now the constitutional body wants to tell you that the Guyana that Guyana voted resoundingly for Mr. Granger when that does not actually reflect the will of the people. It does not reflect what people went into those polling places and said. And so we cannot um, sit back and allow that not only as the political as political party but as the people of this but, country. But the thing is, Priya, the fact that the law allowed for scrutiny of the process, mm -hmm. it is suggesting that GCOM is not a wild horse that is out there doing its own thing uh, because the law allowed for the, the party agents to be there, for observers to be there, and when any fraud enters into the tabulation, we have to call it for what it is, and that is what we're doing. For what, the only set of people who are not calling it fraud and chief of even elections is the beneficiary. The that literally is the Mr. only set. Mr. Granger and his, uh, 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 and, his, and his party. Every other person, all the statements issued by the international community, they talk about electoral fraud. They started out by talking about the process. Well, they ended by saying there are clear evidence of electoral fraud dealing with Region 4 right. um, uh, tabulation and, and verification. The other thing Mr. Granger said in his statement, uh, which was a total lie, that we interrupted right. GCOM's work. At no time, GCOM's work was interrupted by Mrs. Myers, who seemed to be the chief engineer of the fraud on behalf of Mr. Granger and his party. Mm -hmm. It was interrupted by Mr. Lowingfield. It was interrupted once also by the chairperson. And that is the other issue. The region for Aru's office, that is what it is. It shouldn't be commingled with the secretariat of the Guyana Elections Commission. No other Aru office operated that way. The only RO office that had the GCOM secretariat set up in it, when GCOM has its own office, and importantly, 
it is the first time in my memory that you had the GCOM secretariat in the same building with the RO's office. Normally, when all is finished at the RO office, you go to the GCOM secretariat right. at the final analysis. And it's deliberately set up like that. They were supposed to be layers so that you know you get scrutiny at the layer of the at the layer of the actual polling place where you have the polling agent and the, the presiding officer and the presiding officer the presiding officer is gcom staff you have the political representative called the polling agent in the booth then when you move from there and you go to the level of the re returning officer every region has one when you go to the level of the returning officer there's scrutiny there so the returning officer has statutory duties duties laid out in law it's not supposed to they're not supposed to be any interference from the secretariat, like like um, the DCEO, Roxanne or Myers, CEO, the CEO and or so the on, chairman. in the at this level of the RO. So that is was a huge red flag that that the secretariat was interfering. In fact, it was I don't even know if you call it interfering. The secretariat was, was involved. They were running, running the RO's office, running yes. that show, because especially the, Roxanne Myers, yeah, she and she, was, she always she was, seemed to have a cell phone with yeah, someone. She was running the RO office. Um, Look, when when you recall when all the time. All the time. before Mr. Mingo came in to 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 uh, do the results or whatever we were doing. Remember, this lying woman came and she said. Yeah. that they want to clear the office let only the agents of the parties remain in the in that office remember that mm -hmm. and only the three agents or four agents not knowing that she knew that mingo was coming to declare results that were falsified right. and so she is the chief engineer and and importantly mm -hmm. priya People must start to get locked up for election violations. And, and, and we have to make people example, the Myers and the Lowing Fields and all the lot, like 2015, uh, even with fake statement of polls, nothing happened. And therefore they were emboldened and they brazen this time. Mm -hmm. Where the world is looking, you know, somebody said, is the first time they saw an attempt to rig an elections on television. I mean, they're, they're and you know, the, the position, I know why you said right, Priya, because my, my own position has repeatedly been over the years that you don't call people's names on these programs and so, but if you are prepared to do something that you're not ashamed of, then um, we shouldn't have a problem with us calling your name. Do your job. Don't do this kind go engage in this kind of skullduggery but if you're prepared to do it then you gotta be prepared to get your names called because it's, it's clearly something you're proud of so that issue because it's all over their their um this is the talking points they've sent out that the ppp stormed gcom that's the word they're using granger in his statement said we disrupted the proceedings i'll give you four times there were loud shouts or um firm protests made in, in that thing. One was when they started using the spreadsheet and the numbers were so very off and all they were saying is noted, noted, noted. Nothing was changing although we had our statements of poll. Um, so everybody objected and that was loud. The second, so, so, so that's the first attempt, well the first identified attempt to rig and if we didn't object we would be wholly negligent and liable and, and uh, irresponsible. The second attempt was when um, the, the, the flash, drive. flash drive guy ran out, fled the room with the flash drive and when he came back in and he plugged it in, we saw figures that we had never verified on the screen and so on. Um, so that was the second loud protest. The third one was when Mr. Mingo came into the room with in what should have been a resumption of the process of verifying the results and attempted to declare the results again there was a protest about that the fourth one was when mr mingo stood on the balcony and hid himself and attempted to and purportedly declare. declared those results which they re released later and the fifth one the last one for that day which couldn't disrupt any proceedings because all the, the declaration was already made was when the, uh, uh, an ambulance health workers, whatever they, persons who are in ambulance, EMS, health workers, EMS. EMS mm -hmm. service workers, mm -hmm. came with a grenade and everything. 
pursuant to a call they said they got either by and or on behalf of the chairperson that she would she needed medical assistance and they went up to her room nobody followed them nobody troubled them until they came down back and, and the information was that the police was not letting them see her and that's when everybody said we don't care if Claudette wants to hide in that room she wants to hide in that room let her hide we'll deal with that separately but if she needs help in that room medical help she must get it and that's not the PPP that's everybody in the building as a matter of a humanitarian effort she must get that help so this narrative that we stormed the building or we disrupted proceedings the Claudette Singh needing medical help, the results were declared already. There's nothing going on there. We were staying to make sure, well, trying to see her, trying to see Mingo, trying to see Lo and Feel, and making sure that nobody moved the this, this statements um, from the room. The one when Mingo was reading the results, we weren't disrupting his work in the tabulation of anything. We were trying to stop him from declaring fraudulent results on behalf of the people of this country. The whole building was trying to stop him. When he, the third one was when he was trying to read the results again in the room. Again, that was not disrupting tabulation. That was attempting to stop him from reading results without doing the tabulation. And the other two was the flash drive guy, guy, flash drive guy who tried to, we think, play with numbers. That was the first thing we caught and the spreadsheet. So this narrative that, that the, AF, the APNU AFC is putting out, and that Granger has said, particularly in his statement, that we're dis we disrupted the proceedings is absolutely untrue. We were ready from 10 o'clock that night. We were at the office ready to go through those, those statements of poll so that we could get a number. You know, by Thursday, everybody had declared. Almost everybody in every other region had declared except, except um, Region 4. So we, didn't de we didn't delay any results. We didn't disrupt, disrupt any, any. Res any tabulation process. We disrupted when there were visible attempts, to, attempts to, rig to rig an election. That is it. Mr. Granger has also said that he is waiting on the official declaration from GCOM. But he is the one that had planned already more than one swearing in ceremonies that we know of last week. I think Thursday morning. I think Wednesday night he met with his supporters or it was Thursday night and he promised them that when the sun rose the next morning that he would be sworn in and at that time we didn't have any declaration so Mr. Granger we cannot believe anything that comes out of his mouth or any from the mouth of anybody in his party and we have been fed this narrative uh, by him that GCOM is this independent body that I cannot and I will not and I have never interfered um, in this in, in, in the, the workings of GCOM. But the fact of the matter is is that it's the total opposite of that. GCOM seems to be running out of Congress place. That organization, GCOM, has gone rogue. There is no order at GCOM and, and there is see, one, you know, you one know. a few people. Um, from the Secretariat just running the show there. Not just the Secretariat. Valda Lawrence right. was very much involved in the work mm -hmm. of the GCOM administration. I would want to believe upon she has an office there because the way she was up and down the stairway right. with James Bond and all the, the, the cabal he, there. He kept to the room with yeah, the, yeah. the, the yeah. statements yeah. of the Lawrence. Never, that's the I have no the reason. The only time I climbed the stairs when Bingo um, and most people because we kept ourselves in the room that was you we were doing the value the tabulation and the verification in but the the lawrence was all over the place um day and night um up and down up and down i don't believe right. anybody yeah. believes that he, that gcom is independent i think even the people who are quiet and won't publicly go against their party know fully well gcom is not independent particularly not in this election and if we had any doubts let us look at when this interference this infiltration this contamination of GCOM started it was when contrary to constitutional provisions and best democratic practices for the last 20 something years mr. Granger rejected um, 18, 18 names. names submitted to him by the Constitution by the leader of the opposition 18 very able people uh, <clears throat> 
appointed his own person, Mr. James Pattis. Now, you remember this sick thing? Apparently, that's somewhere written high up in the priority in the playbook. Remember, he fought a year sick, he can't come to work, he knows, well, he can't hold a meeting, he can't hold a meeting, he can't hold a meeting, he can't, he doesn't remember what people say. That apparently is a big, that, that's a whole plan for the, AF, the AP and new AFC. And that was foiled, not because he listened to the objections of the people of Ghana, but the Caribbean Court of Justice. That's another time that he broke the constitution because that he breached the constitutional provisions because he's done that so many times. So there is rank interference and contamination of GCOM. Joe has a, a view that this is straight out of the, the playbook. That you no, the thing is, Mr. Granger, uh, if you go back and people must remember these things, he went to speak to his people in Atlanta in 2017. Uh, the PNC chapter there and he made some profound statements. He said that the PNC need to contemplate on how we got into power in 1964 and how we stayed into power. How they got into power. One is via coalition with the guy. How they stayed in power? By rigging elections. And therefore it's the same playbook he's attempting uh, to to again seek to, 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 to happen like happened in the days of the PNC and the Barn. But Mr. Granger, what you don't, this world is a different place. Uh, this time a long time, you know. Um, and therefore, he can continue to spew all the nonsense. The reality is, everybody except the apologists for the PNC, they know that. PNCAFC APNU was attempting to steal elections. Not PPP. He's, today in his presentation, you know, he tried to uh, sell the narrative like there's a big disagreement between him and the PPP. Mr. Grange is a disagreement between you and the world. <laughs> so, so don't fool yourself. And importantly, through all the processes that he is attempting to suggest, we disrupt it. The observers from all the observer missions, they were their right to reprocess the that. The ambassadors and the representatives, they were there. So is he saying that they also disrupted the process? And that they're lying. And, 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 and that they're lying. So Mr. Granger, you could give nine more speeches like the one you gave tonight or uh, wrote, sent out tonight. It changes nothing. Nobody believes you, didn't you not? Your analysts didn't tell you before you write that speech that the Secretary of State of the United States had something to say on this matter. Mm -hmm. Above him, is the, the, the last person to speak on this matter outside the United States would be the President of the United States. So, Mr. Granger could fool himself, but the reality is that everyone is aware that you and your party in collusion with conspirators at GCOM you were trying to deny the Guyanese people their right to elect a government of their choice. You did that from since last year, March because we should have had elections since last year. You denied us one whole year to elect and that is the worst act any leader could commit on its people. And now you and your no, party. No, this is worse. This is thiefing a whole country. Yeah, no, but I'm saying at that time. Yeah. At that time, you denied us the right for one year. Now, after beating you in your head and fighting you down in the streets to ensure you name a date and you name the second of March, you come the second of March after the voting to seek to thief an elections and thief a country and to seek to deny the people the democratic right to elect a government of, the, of your choice. That will not happen, sir. That is not going to happen. The people of this country and the diplomatic community, they will not allow you to do that. So you must understand that clearly and all your speechification and all your, your lame talk wouldn't change the reality as people know it. Even your supporters, I have seen numberless of supporters of, of, of Granger who are clear that what was attempted there was to steal any elections. Who are clear 
that it was fraud. They were attempting to perpetuate the Ghanaian people. Yeah. You know, the, the, thank you, Joy. I mean, I feel like stopping it right here, <laughs> but I just want to warn to to look out over the next coming days. You're going to see tons of lies today. Malcolm Harry Paul threw it up. Um, this is not a low level person. This is an advisor to Granger or something. Threw up um, a set of numbers that said these are votes the PPP got, but they're inaccurate. The PPP used its statement to pose it. These are not the numbers we got. Look, look, these are the votes we got. Um, so we answered that. Then there is this thing that uh, this Russian was uh, attempting to rig the elections and they arrested him. It turns out the Russian is actually an American, Gustavo. He's, he was appointed by President Obama to be the executive director at the IDB. He was merely at the mark. He was not here to rig any elections. He has photographs of himself in the White House in the Oval Office with President Obama, with Mrs. Clinton. Um, in any event, Please don't let me hear people repeating that without thinking. We don't vote electronically. We vote with a pen, everybody saw it, a pencil. We mark an X in the next to the symbol. We add that up with our hands. You sell one, you sell one, you sell one. Then when we get into the place for tabulation, there's no computer work going on there except the reports that are being produced. We, we count that. The arrow is supposed to read it and the parties check it. So every, this, this is a very manual system. There, there's very little room for manipulation at the level they're talking about. There are no Russians in the country trying to do anything. This is one paranoia and two a distraction. Nobody has been able to come to you. Not Granger, not Valda Lawrence, not Basil Williams, not Harry Paul, Christopher Jones, James Bond, all young, male, female, important, unimportant. Nobody has been able to say to any of us, this is why we must not do the tabulation as the representation of the People Act says. Nobody has said, we don't want to look at the statements of poll because there's a feature that the Canadian banknote people put in there that when you look at it, it's sending you blind or it's, it's lost, we can't find them or it's wet by um, we were mopping up and, and water fell on it. Nobody is giving a reason as to why it should not be tabulated the way the law mandates it. All they're saying is Russians come to rig the election and we made noise and leave G come to do its work and he's the constitutional president and he won the election. We on the other hand are saying you must do the tabulation using the statements of poll because the law says you must do the tabulation using the statements of poll. And the law says that because we want a transparent process and we come out of a history of rigged elections and this, this, um, this provision was made particularly because of our history and recommendations made by President Carter and the Carter Center, etc. We are giving you a reason, and there, there's no better reason than just follow the law. We're giving you a reason about why we must use the tabulation. The law says so, and this is the reason for it. Because we want a transparent process that is fair, that recognizes and gives effect to the will of the people. They have not been able to give anybody a reason as to why they must not use that process. In fact, we are in court right now. We won't talk about the content or, or the deal with the issues going on there. But we are in court right now to force GCOM to do what the law says. I, I'm dying to hear why, what reason they will give for not doing what the law says. Mr. Granger and the AP and UAFC could end this now. They could say, if you truly love Guyana, you're talking in your statement about how you love Guyana and how you love Guyanese and how you want everybody to get along and so on. End this. Here's what you can see. Let's say open these boxes, the ballot boxes, and count these votes. You could end this now. Don't go to court. Go tomorrow and report. The votes of go report. tomorrow and report that you, you will recount these votes without making the court force you to do that. Open the ballot box count the votes and whatever whoever wins wins the election governs the country the other party goes and spends five years convincing people to vote for them in 2020 that's all you have to do if you truly love the island Chinese, you want to end all of this that's going on let's recount those votes in the ballot box and the answer is right there it's right there for you to see and they, they if you already. want the truth Priya, they already they know the truth. The, the let's do is. that. But let's put them on the spot. Let's do that. They, that they, let's they, they right the there. It'll take us five hours. And in five hours, you could 
settle this country you claim you say you love. You can bring it back from the edge of this precipice, this, this place we're about to cant over into a police state. People have died, people have been beaten, people have been shot. You have a lot of tensions between ethnicities. You can end this now because let's go back to those boxes. You can say that. We're ready. I want to say um, to all to our supporters and, and to all those of you who are watching, all Guyanese, that this, this process is still salvageable. We can still uh, return to the verification process and that's what we're asking for so that we can go back to the verification process so that when the results are announced that the results will be credible and any government any political party should want that that when they take office that it is on results which have been declared in a credible way and um, you have credibility not only in your country but around the world and Guyanese deserve that and the people of Region 4 deserve that. I voted in Region 4 and I would like my vote to be counted. As it is right now, Region 4 is incomplete and we are saying let's get back to the verification process. If you don't trust that process and you want to go back and open the ballot boxes, let's, let's prove it. Why don't they want to prove that they won the election? Why try to run away with it? We are saying that we um, have the numbers on our side and we have released the evidence to show why we why we have said that let them do the same um, we know that they have not and they will not because their SOPs will show the same as our SOPs because these are all copies of the same SOPs that that, that we all have so as Priya said um, this we can put an end to this within hours we can go back to the process and finish what we started or we can go into the ballot boxes, count each ballot, or Mr. Granger can, can come and concede. He can do that as well because he has the same SOPs. He can do this one decent act, all this decency and honesty that they've, they've always talked about. He can give us a grand demonstration of this honesty and decency and concede that, that he has lost and, and let us have a transition and let us let us have a new government, the government that has credibility and that, that we can show by evidence that the People's Progressive Party Civic has won. Um, the, the court, uh, the case continues, um, will begin tomorrow at 3 p.m. So we, we urge all Guyanese to, to tune into that because it affects all of us. This is not a political struggle. This is a struggle for democracy and this is a fight that all Guyanese have to take on because if we allow a dictatorship if we allow authoritarianism to take over this country we will all suffer and we will all regret it so we all have to stand up as Guyanese not as any supporter of any political party but as Guyanese and defend our democracy and with that um, I say thank you very much thank you um, to you guys and, and have a pleasant evening again